I decided to make this video because I think it has a good chance of taking you through a summary of many of the functions of advanced configuration inside of uh, Rector. And uh, that is the software that runs on panels like this one. Let me see if I can get it to you. The Frameshot Uno, basically all our panels are fitted with a powerful Linux driven engine. We call it Blue Pill Platform. That entails a lot of things. Uh, Blue Pill is thereby a name that uh, indicates the whole technology range in Skahoy. Inside that universe, you find Reactor, which is our panel management application, the one that currently uh, connects the Frameshot Uno to Panasonic cameras, for instance, or video switches, routers, etc. And we also have SkyOS, which is the Linux version or the custom Linux that we have underneath that takes care of all the packages you can install. So you can see there's like a ton of different device support installed on my uh, blue pill device here, the Frameshot Uno uh, device course that is connectivity to anything from, you know, like lenses, uh, AJ devices, Colorbox, Kumo, Ari cameras, uh, Baco Event Master, Blackmagic Design, devices like Smart View, Hyperdeck, Video Hub, ATEM switches, uh, Canon cameras. Just go through this list. You can see how extensive the support for various devices are in the Blue Pill platform. Today we'll be looking at some Panasonic devices. And then we have uh, applications like Reactor running here, System Manager, which is this whole UI and Hardware Manager that connects to the panel, Device Core Connector that allows us to talk to devices on Blue Pills elsewhere in the universe. And uh, DC Link, which is a little AV integration um, application. Well, there's a lot to dive into there. We also have the settings page, which gives you ways to set up the IP address and uh, enable uh, the Wi Fi internally in the Blue Pill device, etc. So, um, the, the, the point of today is really to look into configuration and uh, to just give you a quick idea where we are starting from. I have a Frameshot Uno that is a device like this one with uh, color displays. And on, on those call displays, we can show thumbnails. In this case, the thumbnails come out of a Panasonic UE150 camera. And the selected camera is determined by a RP150. So actually, it is a Panasonic controller that controls the camera. And you see, I have tabs open with the picture from the cameras here. I have a UE70 and I have a UE150. And those two cameras are here. So let me see. Yes, I just need to reload this interface. There we go. And if I select the UE150, I can use the joystick on the Panasonic controller to move this around. And you also see thumbnails in the frame shot. Uno is responding to the selected camera on the Panasonic controller. I, it, it is sort of untypical, but um, this comes from a configuration or setup I did uh, in another video where the basic pitch is how a frame shot Uno will um, extend the capabilities of the Panasonic controller. I'm sure this controller is uh, used a lot of places in the world. Sometimes people will use this because they have it or they prefer it. I don't know. Other times they will use the PC Extreme from Skyway, which is our top of the line PC controller. Regardless, the visual preset recall can actually be used in both cases. And this is an example how visual preset recall for the Panasonic series of cameras can be done from this uh, Frameshot Uno that is listening to the RP150. So we'll look into that configuration uh, just quickly to show you that this actually works. I recall a preset by pressing this button. Oh, I was already there. But if I recall this preset, you can see it goes somewhere else. And if I want to even create a new preset, I could do that. I'll just press and hold the button next to here and it will store that thumbnail in the display. Let's go to the configuration side of things. Um, but before we do so, this is the home screen. This is where you do easy mapping of things. I am connected to the RP150 Panasonic controller. I'm also connected to each of the two PC cameras. And they have ID1 and ID2. And over here, we have the camera mapping constant set uh, a, or mapping table. And basically, that uh, determines that camera number three and camera number four on the RP150 from group number one will um, result in setting up device number one or number two on the frame shot Uno. That is what's happening here. And I have a virtual trigger listening to that in the configuration. So let's go look at that configuration over here. The uh, configuration is also so fairly small that and, and it kind of entails all kinds of nice little things. So I think 
this would be a summary for some of you and maybe for the first time for some of uh, for the rest of you but basically inside the configuration we have um what we call um layers and uh, they are usually um like two layers like these two would be shown at different uh, uh yeah times so um this um, these thumb preset one up to 14 are actually what we call behaviors that determine what goes into each of the displays on the controller here. There are 14 of those and they are mapped out onto these keys. Actually, if I think maybe if I click this key, uh, no, maybe not, but I will, I'll just uh, show you a website called darkroomskyhoy.com, which is, um, let me try that again, darkroom here. All right, uh, if we go there, Frame Shaduno, uh, that is a nice little resource. Uh, Frame Shaduno is one of our controllers. This website has all our controllers. And if you go to the Frame Shaduno page, you can see this is a hero image you can use for press stuff. And down here, we have something called Wireframe. And if we go to that one, really useful, it will show you the numbers of each of these keys. That is hardware components. And uh, hardware components, those numbers are actually the numbers these uh, keys have in here. So when I have a def defined behavior called thumb preset one up to 14, I tell you these are the ones mapped down onto these keys. And uh, as I am, if, if I set it into simulation mode, you can see I can go between two pages. So something happens when I press these two buttons. It, I could just as well pr press them in real life. Actually, you can see it's happening on the controller here in, in, in real life. Um, regardless of if I press it uh, in, in real life or if I do it in, in the web UI, it doesn't matter, uh, it will be the same. So it's more useful for me often to do this on, on the web uh, browser. But um, see, what happens is that uh, we are basically toggling as we are pressing these two buttons, we are toggling be between visibility of this layer and this layer here. And that is because when I press these two buttons, the behavior associated with those buttons are changing the value of a variable called ext preset page and that apparently would go between the values one and two now let's take a look at that in the um, code actually where are these two defined it turns out that those behaviors are defined on the hosting layer or the parent layer um, so what is it we have here we have a layer here that includes another layer that includes another two layers and um, since i want the ext page one and two behaviors to to always be available, I have chosen to define them on this parent layer because then I need only define them once. And then the definition of thumb preset one and two, uh, sorry, one here and on this layer, they will override each other or alternate as I'm, I, as I'm pressing this. Okay, so let's uh, click this one and see what we have here. We, um, we are definitely the parameter we are adjusting. We can see that in the uh, inspector here is the ext preset page variable and it is set to the value two in case i press this button and if i press this button um basically i'm going over here then you can see ext ah it's actually opposite now this one yes that one will go to page number one while the other one will go to page number two as you can see from the inspector over here Okay, so uh, there's a variable changing value, and that variable is actually defined right here. So you define these variables yourself. There's not like a system default set of variables. There are the variables you create. So another two variables that we find, now we are on the subject of variables, you can see apart from ext preset page, which is changing its value between one and two, as I'm pressing these two buttons, and that determines the visibility of these two layers. We also see another two variables. We see the camera name and device index. And now those two actually changed as I'm pressing on the RP150, this button, which is selecting camera number three, uh, you see that device index and camera name is changing. So now I'm just going forth and back here, all right? You see that is changing and how come? Well, this is due to a virtual trigger. And the virtual trigger is something that is listening to states on devices. So let's just quickly go back to home screen because on home screen, you saw that we had this camera mapping table. It had three entries, but just just forget the, the third one because there's only these two that is actually functioning. And this entry is like a row, rows and columns in a spreadsheet. And they are in, it, it, um, interpreted according to the virtual trigger we have made. But basically each of these rows says camera number, group number, hence, uh, you know, number three and one, 
uh, shall be mapped to the camera name and device number uh, UE70 and one UE150 and two if it is camera number four and, and one. Now, and that is exactly what you see is happening over here. So it seems that as I'm pressing these buttons, that is exactly the values that are being installed on these two. And those two uh, values is basically apparently what determines the behavior of these one up here. We, we will get back to that in a moment. But the virtual trigger itself that is listening to this state uh, is defined here. And if we look at the details for this one, especially if we uh, set show more here, you can see that it has a reference to a constant set. That is critical to understand because the constant set called camera select, so that's the one on the home page, even though it's, uh, it's I think, mapping. Um, it's like the the actual code name for it is a camera selector. Uh, it is also found here in the tree. So if I click here, you can see this is the same table as I saw on the home page. But the point is that those two constant sets that you see here, especially this one camera selector, uh, is, is um, both available here in the tree. This is where it really lives. But on the home page, it is brought out and, and given direct access to people because this is an important configuration tool to add rows in the camera selector uh, mapping table or constant set. You can call constant sets mapping tables if you want, because that is often how they're used, mapping things, uh, configuration tables, etc. But they are also available here in the tree because this is actually where it lives. Uh, you also find its name here, but I can tell you the reason why this is grayed out is because it exists on this level as well. And when it exists on this level, this one is uh, overridden by the previous definition that is closer to the root of, of the layer tree. So this is why um, it uh, the existence of, of camera selector up here is ignored. But we have this table, and if we look into the virtual trigger, as I said, it has this constant set reference. It actually means that it will, will go over the rows in the constant set. And for each of these rows, it is going to create, it, it will evaluate this condition. So let's just bring this condition up. And this condition basically says, you can either read it by this one. Let's try to do that. It says this parameter, let's just see. It says Panasonic RP, that is the device call that talks to the RP150, device number one, mind you that. Uh, and the parameter called camera select. If that value is equal to, and now you see the constant RP150 cam, that is actually the, the code name for the, the, the value from the uh, camera selector constant set that we just looked at that hold, uh, held the, the number of camera from the RP150. If that is equal to that, and if the group select from the parameter of the RP150 is equal to the value that is in, typed in for group, in that case, this condition is true. Uh, you can also see it written out in code up here if you prefer that. Um, many of us who create these configurations prefer to see it in this way, but this is like a more human readable version of the same. So if this condition is true, then it will actually send a, a positive trigger to this behavior. And if you go into this behavior and look more closely, you can see we have an event handler called set. And inside this one being a sequence, it says, all right, if I retrieve that positive trigger, uh, that these two conditions are true, then I am going to set the value of device index. That is this variable over here. I'm going to set that to another name from the constant set, which was the device index in the constant set. And I'm also going to take the variable camera name, this one variable over here, and set to the value of camera name from that constant set. All right. So uh, actually, if we go into this constant set here, in other words, that is the camera name and the device number or device index, those two values are transferred over into the variables here. So these variables can drive what we see in the display. If, by the way, the conditions are matching up with the camera number and the group number. And that is happening by like 10 times a second, going through this table and checking if any change has happened to these things. So the moment I actually make that change, the moment I press another button on the RP150, this, in, in this case, uh, the evaluation of this one here that would previously be true because I had camera four and group number one selected. Now that is false. But this one becomes true, and because this one becomes true, it will now set the camera name and the device number to these two values up here. If I go back to four, 
opposite thing is happening. This one now becomes true because it matches up with this, and we transfer these two numbers over into the variables. That's what's happening in the virtual trigger. For those of us who are so experienced here, we like to see it in JSON. The JSON code will actually give you like a nice little overview of this, or at least we think this is nice. Um, yeah, let me see if I can get it up for you so you can we can read through this together. So actually, this is a UI for the underlying JSON code. And quite often you'll see us go into the JSON code because it, it gives us like a clear view of everything that has been set up. So once again, you can see there's this constant set reference, a reference to the constant set camera selector. OK, so this is where we are iterating through. The mode of the of the um, um, virtual trigger is binary. There's even a li like a nice little um, description here what it means. So what, what is binary? Yeah, you, you can read that if you want. But it means that it will concern itself with either or on this condition. The uh, condition it, it is looking at is this one called binary active if. In other words, it becomes active if this condition is true, namely that the parameter called camera select from the RP Panasonic dash RP device core device number one equals the constant set value field RP 150, etc. So there you see the, the condition that we looked at. Uh, just ignore these because they are not being used and they, they are just empty objects. Sorry for having them in the in the code, but they are not they, they don't mean anything here. Then uh, so that will generate a binary uh, true or false that goes into the behavior. And the behavior basically says there's a, an event handler here. So there's an event coming in when there's a change happening. And that event it will accept binary triggers. And this is a binary trigger because it is a true false situation. So uh, if there's a change to this, then we will basically run this. Uh, or if it goes f on the rising edge from false to true, then this sequence of events will be executed. And the sequence of events is this one that the variable device index will be set with this value and the variable camera name is being set with this value. So there you see this is a JSON code behind the whole virtual trigger here. So that is pretty cool. That was the virtual trigger. How are we listening to the stuff that happens on the RP150? Now, if some of you guys um, wonder, I, I, if you search our GitHub repo, you'll find there's something called TestTube. TestTube is a tool that is a, it's a command line tool and it can connect to device cores on your blue pill device. And if you have just like I had, because I had like on packages here, a ton of stuff installed and one of them is device core connector. So if device core connector is running, it means that test tube, if um, set up correctly, can actually connect to the blue pill and show you this kind of view into all the parameters. And um, th this, I dare do this because in the case of the device core for Panasonic's RP150 uh, controller, it is uh, quite simple what we are doing. We are basically having a parameter like connected. Am I connected to the device or not? I have uh, something like camera select. I have group select. And you can notice these values. You see group se select currently has a value of one. And up here we have the value of four. So if I actually press number three on the controller, you can see it changes to three. And I can actually change this value to four. So you'll also see that I can change it over to four. So this goes both ways. And of course I can do all this from within reactor by assigning the, the camera select, uh, I don't even, uh, you know, I can do more than just listen to the camera. I, I'm What I'm showing you is I'm just listening to the RP150, but I could actually control it the other way back. I could I could inject the, the camera selection from outside from my Skyhoy controller. I don't do that today, but I just show you here that we have like this, this two-way communication that I can I see the value as it is in the controller, but I can also manipulate it. We have something called port select, recall preset, recall, um, preset again, strange. Standby trace, that's, that might be a label uh, mistake here because that is like, um, I'm pretty sure it's a, it's a labeling mistake because standby trace would mean like arm a trace execution on the control and then we can start a trace and we can stop a trace again on the Panasonic cameras. So that was just a, a quick little intro to the test tube tool that uh, the more adventurous of you might enjoy uh, using to explore parameters. Uh, that can be used inside the uh, whole blue pill universe um, and typically inside reactor here. All right, um, let's go back to the configuration. Um, so just like I could look at the virtual triggers in in this way, look at it as, as JSON, I can also do so for the whole configuration if I want. And uh, let's, uh, let's look at how the whole layer structure is uh, set up here. So if we go to the root layer, this one, and uh, look at edit raw, then we get it up here in um, 
in a JSON um, browser. So I'll just separate these two windows out so we can maybe look at them uh, separately. So if you look at this, it's actually not too long, um, the code inside of this. And um, if I can also collapse section. So if you just collapse the constant set section, you can see that the root layer is quite simple. It has a name, which is just for show. It, the that, that was the root here. This one has a name, which is shown here. And then it says import layer files. So actually everything that happens up here is coming from this import layer file instruction that basically imports this one. This is so this is where all the stuff is happening. And then we have this HVC key map that says that everything that is defined for panel number one up here shall be mapped over to panel number two here. Why? Because if you look at this, this is actually defined as panel number two. It could also be panel number five. And in that case, this um, uh, would then say basically anything defined inside of this configuration for panel number one shall be mapped over to panel number five. So there's this whole um, mapping functionality uh, going in uh, on in here. Let's just undo this. Okay, so if we look into the constant set, then we see basically, um, can I just do this? Yeah, okay, like this. So we have camera selects and something called quick class. I'm sorry about the quick class because that seems to be like a relic from previous um, configurations. But actually, if we look into the camera selector, I think you'll see things that make sense to you. First of all, there is a constant de definition, and that is because with the constant set here or the mapping table, depending on what you want to call it, we define every column that can be. And uh, that means a camera name, what is it? Yeah, it has this, um, you know, friendly name, camera name colon, it is a type string. Then the device index is called device number. So those are actually the labels that you see. If you go in here, that is the camera name, the device number. You know, that, that is us putting that in here so it becomes useful on the front end. But the actual, you know, code names underneath that we will have to use are those. And the same is true for RP150 cam. So as I said, I was I was referring to that when we looked at the condition. This one is used in the condition, but this is the friendly name that we are seeing in the UI right there, okay? And the same over here, group num is also just the friendly name of RP150 group, which is the code name we use for reference. So if I shut down the uh, constant definitions, then you'll see the sets. And the sets are basically the two rows here. So the first row would be this one. And if I expand each one of these, you can basically see how uh, the values um, are shown inside. I can also expand everything at once. So you see row number one, name for camera, device index, value three, and one that is actually this row right here. And if you expand the other one, then you'll see similar for the second row, then you have the uh, UE150241 and so on. That is all shown in here. Front end meta. Uh, oh yeah, the uh, order of columns. So this is the reason why they're re represented in this way. And highlight true is what actually brings it up onto the front page of uh, onto the home page of reactor in instead of the uh, what you saw is that inside of configuration tab here uh, there's actually additional constant set which are still hidden in here and why would that be well because these constant sets are still there to drive things but we are we have no intention of letting people access them and I'll uh, show you why that is so uh, this is actually a nice uh, time for us to um, to take a look at uh, so let's just move this, uh, shut this um, uh, editor down and then instead edit raw on this one and see what that can do. So that is now our JSON view into the code that uh, puts all of this together. And um, I'll just, you know, shut it all up like this. And then you can see the virtual trigger that we looked at before is actually right here. So that is the full virtual trigger we inspected a moment ago. In, in a separate window. So let's not look more at that. But the two hardware uh, um, HVC behaviors, hardware component behaviors that we have, uh, ext page one and two are defined here. So uh, when I click this one, what you see over here, if you use show more, or even if you use show JSON, then this JSON code that you're now looking at is exactly what I see right here. This is this snippet, you know, you see just see that particular snippet when I click here and show JSON. So you see that code. And in the UI above, you see it all broken out like match value two is actually this value right there. Uh, the name, the name is found right here. And the parent ID, 
is this behavior scar hoist set value. So those are basically the uh, three of the four things that are being set, the parent ID, the name, the constant value, and the IO reference. The IO reference is the parameter. So parameter, behavior, constant, and then all the way down here, somebody was friendly enough to give it a name. And the same would be true for ext page too. You know, parameter, which is the ext preset page variable that determines which page of presets are we seeing, um, the behavior and the match value, and then page two as a, a name for it. So that's, that's what we are seeing here in JSON, um, where we just see everything together. Uh, the just to let you know this parent ID thing is referring to what we call a master behavior so it could also say be master behavior name but it says parent ID and set value is a master behavior that exists inside the Skaho universe actually if you want to know what is inside of that uh, it can be advisable to go in here and, and use show parent behavior and then it will bring up a window where if you format this you see actually what set value is and inside of set value, we, we have a Skahoy defined uh, behavior that will basically say any trigger that comes in will set the value that is defined in the constant called match value. And, and that's, that's what I think if we collapse this one, we basically have a single event handler called trigger. And inside that event handler, you see some event preprocessing that, that actually helps us in case that we assign this to an encoder or, or a joystick or, or a fader bar, because we have designed these master behaviors to be clever enough to adapt to any hardware component you assign them to. I mean, you can imagine a button is a button press, but if you move a joystick, then what happens? Actually, if you move a joystick, we have to find that um, when you um, move it in any direction, it is going to create an act down trigger when you pass like halfway of full swing with the joystick. If you do this for a fader, as you cross the middle for fader, it will create an act down event, like corresponding to pressing the button. If you turn an encoder either way, it's gonna create an act down event. So this is why it would work, even though you assign these, these um, the, the set value to a component that is usually not used for setting a value of something, it will still respond according to this event preprocessing that turns pulses, analog and speed values into binary triggers. And those binary triggers will pick up the value of the constant called match value, which is being defined up here for the behavior uh, with a friendly name again, and also a little bit of information that is the reason why it ends up being rendered so nicely in the UI uh, right here. Uh, where did that window go anyway? Uh, we can show parent behavior once again here. Is there any, I mean, parent behaviors, you can explore those, but they also tend to be quite comprehensive because we have designed them to be like able to, to adapt to anything. Usually you won't do that. If you build behaviors yourself, you probably think of a button and then you focus on that button and you don't care about compatibility with encoders. But we have done that in a lot of the, the master behaviors that is inside of Reactor um, built into the system uh, from the base. Okay, so um, that was these two uh, master behaviors here, changing that variable. Uh, the HVC key map is basically what uh, makes us able to work with aliases. You see the aliases, ext page one and two, and also the aliases we saw up here, thumb preset one up to 14. Those aliases need to be mapped down onto keys, and those keys would be the ones that we found on darkroomscahoy.com on the wireframe of our controller where we can basically zoom in on these wireframes and we can see what numbers are assigned to the various hardware components there. So this is what's happening right here. Very, very important little uh, thing, uh, but also quite nice that we don't need to carry around knowledge about the actual numbers of, of stuff. So the master behavior you see right there is actually uh, our way, our opportunity of creating a master behavior, just like the ones the set value that we just explored that are built into the system. So we can define master behaviors anywhere in the tree as we want. And we have created one called PDC thumb preset select. And this is actually us defining a master behavior, or actually we are redefining it because it turns out that we are apparently redefining something that is already in the system. That is a master behavior in Skahoy a standard library called PC thumb preset select and we are now extending that so let's just fold this out completely so we can see everything and this one is like 
a template and that template doesn't do anything unless we overwrite certain things. So, um, and you find that used in a lot of configurations uh, here at Skyhoy. So you, um, you could basically follow this if you wanted to do it for a new PTC camera integration. We need to define the IO reference that is the main one for the preset recall function. And that is the preset recall parameter. Uh, typically, there will be this dimension, namely which preset ID is it. And we also have the variable device index to determine which camera is it from the particular device call. And then we have an event handler store that is being used for storing and uh, that would have to then call preset store. And then for the conditional feedback, we need to make sure that we are also looking uh, at the right device call to indicate whether the preset exists or not. And on Panasonic, that is one of the cool things that on Panasonic cameras, we can actually query the cameras whether it has a preset stored in a particular preset number. So we are utilizing that to give the, the color of the buttons a specific yeah, lighting up or turning them off. Uh, and, and that's what's uh, going on uh, right here. In this case, we are using uh, that and also combining it with something else. Let me see. Um, yeah, I won't go into detail on that. And then finally, there's uh, a graphic. Yeah, so this is where you see the preset thumbnail from the Panasonic device core is being pulled. Actually, if we have cameras that doesn't have a thumbnails uh, ability built in to themselves, we need to um, basically use the frame grabber from Skyhoy that uh, can do it for us. But that's for a different video, definitely. But this master behavior, the, the reason why we define it is because um, the actual behaviors for all our presets here are even they are even coming from an include file we can see it in the tree because this thumbnail preset control extended is from a file skyhoy.snippers.pdc thumbnail presets 10 and that oh sorry about that um that file uh, we can see is actually being imported just like this file was imported so in fact what we have here is the root file imports this one that imports in turn this one with thumbnail presets. So if, I think if I hold down here my command key or alt key on Windows probably and click, then we are taking over into this file and we can see what is in here. This is a generator and generators is automatically generating layers inside of reactors, super advanced stuff. But still, let me just take you through it. It says basically, um, it will generate behaviors. It will uh, make page sizes, which is 10 big, or in case this constant is set, that is gonna determine the size. And actually this constant is set because look at this, that constant right here, config preset generators, config preset generators has one set, which is what the zero is pointing to. That is the first row, the zeroth row. And if I click on this one, oh, I'm sorry, because this has not had any definitions for its constants done. So it's just a set, but actually first set, first entry in here, this is the first entry, the value of page size, size ext is 14. And in this case, this is the reason why we do not see 10, but we see 14 behaviors being automatically generated by this code right here. So that supersedes the value 10, which would otherwise be the default. Thumb preset is the HVC alias prefix. In other words, the first part of the name and then the numbers is just applied on top. And let me see option label prefix. I'm not sure about that. But the variable name ext preset page is what is being used to this is this one. That is the one that is being used to go between the pages. And then inside this one, we also define the variable ext preset page. And we set this thing called expand scope to true, which means that it will travel down the layer structure and then basically overtake how this variable is defined down here. Because if we look at the definition of this one, which we'll do in a moment, we'll see that it's actually like empty. It says it has a, a parameter called capture and capture means that I'm just here. I am making myself available on this level of the tree so you can all use me. But mm, I am relying on somebody further out in the branches of the tree, defining who I am and what I can do and what my purpose is and so on. And that is exactly what we are doing right here uh, inside the generator. The generator is going to lay a little bit on top of it because that is going to extend this definition by information like um, what values it can obtain and so on. So generators is generally a little bit of a mystery for many of you and don't be too ambitious about it because we have not had time to fully document it so that you guys can make it super useful. 
But it is obviously very powerful because now comes the main point. We are drawing all this out of the source. The source is our constant set called presets. In other words, uh, words this one. And if I look at this one, you click this one, you see we just have a nice table of 28 values. And uh, looking at the JSON, you can see this is just, mm, okay, a way to make 28 uh, presets that this uh, generator can iterate over. So we are basically going through all the rows of that constant set. And that is now being divided by 14, which results in two pages. And those are the two pages we can navigate by ext page one and page two buttons over here. So that's what the, the generator does. And, and the two pages are, are those we see uh, right there. Actually, fun little thing, what would happen if we, uh, let's say we can do this in JSON, so we can just extend this one and then uh, put in value 29. What do you think would happen? Just notice the tree, I save. And the moment I save, you see that because 28 divided by four, 29 divided by 14, is now not two anymore, it is two point something, which means that we need to round up and we get a third page with these behaviors defined. All right, and that's what the automate, uh, the uh, generators do for you. Uh, this is what makes them powerful. This is what also makes them mysterious and unmanageable in so many ways. But I still want you guys to be able to appreciate them by explaining to you the kind of stuff that they are solving for us. So variable name here is being used for navigation. Obviously, this is you know why we see this condition down here for layer visibility. Uh, the template behavior is the final thing that I should tell you something about. Because then one thing is going through all these constant sets. And then for each of these, um, yeah, for the constant set called presets, making the pages, making sure this variable is being used to navigate the pages, uh, setting up HVC aliases like this one. And then this template behavior is what is being used to, to drive it. And that template behavior, as you can see, has a parent ID referring to, and now we could basically go back. I don't know if we can do that up here. So I'll, I'll just you know shut it down. But that is exactly the master behavior we saw right there. If I click it here, I get it up here. We can ex explore it here. But I, we saw it in the context of the full JSON a moment ago. But this is where you know we are using the uh, PDC thumb preset select um, redefined master behavior from from this this position in the configuration. So uh, let me just bring this up again. So this is uh, like our main configuration. And uh, let's try to close it all down again. We now looked at the import layer file where we get this. Um, we, we are using reusing code that all our PDC co controllers are actually using. This is why we choose to import it and work with it because then we are using well-known functioning generator code for preset uh, generation. Then we have um, uh, the, the variables. Maybe we should look at those. You can see the, the camera name and the device index are those two variables that are being set by our virtual trigger. And as I promised, we can see the ext preset page variable has this flag capture equals true, which is the same as saying any time that it is being defined further out in the tree, as it will be on on over here on the thumbnail, then that definition is going to be picked up at this level. And because it is on this level, it means that these two behaviors ext page one and two are able to manipulate it. Because if we only defined it up here, then these two behaviors can't manipulate it. And the reason why we need to define it up here is because this variable now knows that it has three pages it can go through because automatically the generator will tell ext preset page variable that it has three options, one, two, and three. And when we put that up here and it says, I think expand scope is, is what it, will, uh, it had um, added to it then it will travel down the tree and overcheck the definition here. And that allows these two to actually manipulate the value of it. Let's see what else we need to do. We saw we looked at the constant set, we looked at the presets. And now we, we looked at that separately. But you could also look at them in the context of the whole config here if you wanted to. And uh, you can look at the uh, config preset generators where we have this value 14 that drives it, but we had no definition, which is why in the UI, it looks so ugly. Um, we have finally the camera selector here, which is basically a simple template with only constant definition, but no sets are defined, but just a constant definition. And this is what is being pulled out on the front page the moment we use this configuration added to our con 
to to uh, to the front page for the first time. I think this basically took us through. So thanks for watching. The video is already pretty long, but it gave me a chance to talk about generators. Uh, we talked about HVC key maps. We looked at constant sets and how a constant set defined otherwise in the tree, like further up towards the root, will uh, basically override any constant set further down. Constant sets here, which are not taken out onto the homepage because we just want to use them for iteration. Uh, so they're not supposed to be changed by the user. This is why we keep them in here. And um, also how the variables here are being manipulated by virtual trigger. I think that is an amazing amount of things that we had a chance to take you through on, on this configuration with a quite exciting synthesis of a Skahoy controller like this one and an RP150 controller from Panasonic that uh, is basically just working together in this wonderful synergy. Thanks for watching and see you again in a different video.